Hello, and welcome to the Shiba Chat Show. This is your podcast for all things Shiba Inu. On Shiba Chat, you will learn about health, training, education, nutrition, grooming, art, owner stories, and experiences about our beloved, fluffy, and natural monument of Japan, the Shiba Inu. We will be helpful and fun, full of guests like Shiba owners, trainers, nerds, and experts from around the globe. Now, Here's your host, directly from Portugal, Charlie Mancini. Hello. In this episode, we speak with Lola and Ian in Lisbon, Portugal, with Aki, a seven-year-old female red Shiba from San Francisco, and Kanto, an 18-month-old male Shikoku born in Lithuania. You can follow their past and future travels on Instagram at World. I repeat, whoa, such world. Okay, welcome Lola and Ian to our Shiba chat show. Uh, you're living in Lisbon, Portugal, right? Yep, for f- what, four years now, I think. Four years, cool. Do you enjoy uh, the Portuguese living? Yep, we love it. Okay, cool. For how long have you been fascinated with uh, Japanese breeds, with dog Japanese breeds? Um, for me, I think I was never a dog person per se. I, I grew up with no, my family didn't have any pets. Okay. Um, so I think for me, it might have been my first exposure to Shiba's might have been uh, the Doge meme, <laughs> although that seems a little late. But I'm not sure. But I knew. 2013. Yeah. I think it might have been a little bit earlier because I think I remember in college having seen something. But, you know, I knew about maybe Akitas mm-hmm. uh, because they were popular in California, um, where I'm from. But I think Shiba's I hadn't seen until much more Which recently. Which city in, in California? Which city? Uh, around near San Francisco. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, in the case of Lola, in your experience? Um, so for me in 2013, um, I was working in San Francisco mm-hmm. and it's where I started to see uh, Shiba's on the street and there were dogs that I've never seen before. <laughs> so from there, I kind of researched the breed and that's really how I got to know the multiple um, aspects and interesting behavior of the breed itself. <laughs> so just from seeing dogs on the street, I would say in San Francisco. So nine, no, yeah, nine years ago. Nine years, nine ago. years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're quite experienced with the breed. <laughs> uh, not like contacting directly, but uh, w- uh, do you remember what uh, were your first impressions of uh, those breeds, like Shiba Inu, for instance? Mm, first impression. I never, I, I guess I hadn't interacted with the Shiba until, who was it? My uncle's, so my, my, my aunt and uncle had one at one point. So I would see it once in a while. Um, but always, you know, it was always disinterested. It was always at like a big party and it was always disinterested, you know, just kind of like sniffing people and walking around. It was pretty oh, okay, calm. Okay. You weren't but, like um, around directly with the Shiba? No, I think the first Shiba that I interacted with was probably Aki, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> I don't know if you, if we mentioned that, but I had Aki uh, before uh, we were a couple. We were together. So yeah. together? Mm-hmm. The, the first introduction that he had with Aki was very formal let's say <laughs> like really? he didn't know how to interact with the dog it was pretty cute kind of... <laughs> yeah, <it> was like, <laughs> oh, okay. i've seen that on the, the telly okay yeah. um, and for you uh what was the biggest uh, struggle uh you faced like training aki and uh, kanto kanto mm-hmm. 
What does that mean? Do you know the the the, the meaning of the the names? Uh, if I remember right, Aki is kind of like has a meaning of like fall, autumn, and then also kind of red, red orange colors mm -hmm. um, in Japanese. And then Kanto, I'm pretty sure, is the region around Tokyo, uh -huh. or of, of the region that Tokyo is in. Kanto. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, what were the the, the biggest uh, struggles you had, like when training them? Um, so for Kenzi, uh, no, sorry. For, so Aki, what did I, the only thing I taught Aki how to do was to, <laughs> to catch, <laughs> which is very good at catching now. <laughs> um, but Kanto, because that was like a much more intense process, so we got him during the pandemic, uh, which was good because we kind of had more time to spend with him. Um, and we had our friend Matt, who I think you met, who, who kind of helped us in the beginning. Um, especially because when he arrived, he was he was already almost four months old, um, and up until then, he had spent he had spent his whole life on a farm, kind of with you know very few people around, you know yeah. far away. Um, so being in a city was new, um, and with new people was a was a thing. So Matt helped us a little bit there, or a lot actually in the beginning. Um, so he was kind of better with people. He still you know it still takes a little while for him to warm up to new people. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so that's that's kind of the main thing is being in the city and and with uh, with new people. Yeah, because you haven't uh, like socialized a lot with people, only maybe with uh, his family. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of dogs and animals, but so up up to four months, it's a dog who who had never been exposed to a city, okay. and everything from the day we got him where the, the real challenge with him is being in the city which is against the nature of a dog right yeah, and course. him being born in the countryside and not being exposed up to four months was was a trick yeah mm -hmm. um aki was very easy though like and she was yeah. from the beginning in the city and um, a female which may makes it easier as well i, I don't know i guess so um, yeah. I've heard that from uh, the owners as well. <laughs> the bells are easier and uh, they are a bit calmer than uh, than the male dogs. Mm -hmm. I only have the experience with Satoshi. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> let's go. Really adventurous. Uh, and Kanto, where did you find uh, Kanto? Which country? Because in here in Portugal we don't have any any Shikoku Inu uh, breeder. No, I don't. Yeah, it, he. Um, so we had originally, when we decided we wanted to look for a, wanted to look for, we were wondering maybe a, a second Shiba or a Shikoku. Um, and when we decided to look for a Shikoku, um, it was we found there are, there are a lot of breeders, mostly kind of in France, Belgium, Netherlands. Okay. Um, and we actually contacted one in the Netherlands. And so when we were back in Belgium and visiting Lola's family, we, we drove um, to visit this breeder who had, who had a, two Shikokus. Um, and then it was her that recommended um, the breeder uh, in Lithuania where we got Kanto because she had a litter available. Um, and the other, the other ones that we had contacted were, you know, six months or a year um, or more or more. Or more. Yes, yeah. to, to be like expecting uh, to a new uh, litter. Um, yeah. Okay, and uh, why Shikoku Inu? Uh, you had already Shiba Inu, uh, next Akita Inu. No. <laughs> <laughs> next one. I think, yeah, uh, we really liked the, uh, like we really, we really like the the kind of independence and the behavior of, of Aki and, and just Japanese breeds in general. Mm -hmm. um and so having just kind of like a i don't know something different something new a little bit larger we kind of felt like we were at a time like with aki we we traveled a lot and we would kind of we would do road trips and, and travel with her and it was easy um and we kind of felt that we could we could maybe have a slightly bigger dog and and do that um and we really like the look of the the kind of fox wolf um look and the kind of more gray colors that Shikokus can have. Um, uh -huh. I found those really beautiful also. 
mm-hmm. and interested in in getting to know in the real life what the difference in behaviors of the two mm-hmm. breeds could well, be and are. Yeah, and uh, what are the, the main differences uh, between? Mm-hmm. Sheep? <laughs> of course, in general, and you only have you only have one sheep and one sheep cuckoo, so we can be generalizing. But in general, what are the main differences bet- between this breed and the sheep cuckoo? I would say caring and loving, but I would that leave might yeah to develop that. Right. It, it might just be because he's a lot younger, but he's a lot more. Uh, whereas Aki is more kind of independent and, you know, she's always, you know, somewhere else kind of in the same room, but, you know, further away. Yeah. Well, she'll come, she'll come ask for scratches when she wants. <laughs> um, but Kanto is always wants to be close to you. Um, you know, as soon as we're petting Aki or something, he'll always come in and just like push himself in front. Um, because yeah. he's, he's a much more, and we actually even saw that the breeder sent us videos, um, when, when they were puppies and he was always the one that was like close to the breeder and, and always trying to snuggle and, wow. and, uh, and be close. So that's, that's one thing yeah. that's he's much more Tender like, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guy. Cool, cool, cool. Um, um, they're also, I mean, the, the, they both kind of have that, that kind of like natural instinct and a bit of a prey drive. So like, as it, like the Shiba was supposed to kind of in, use in hunting to flesh out birds uh, and the Shikoku was supposed to be for hunting wild boar, Javali. Uh, so, and we actually had a, we had a video of, uh, we received a video of his, of yeah. Kanto's father actually chasing a wild boar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, cool, cool. But the, the, they can kill a wild boar like one shikoku for one boar? There's a, there's a breeder in Japan who specializes in, I think specializes both in exporting dogs from Japan, but also in, in actually training them for hunting and using them for hunting. But it's not for killing. It's Yeah, actually for, for so usually you go with two, you have two shikoku and they kind of help, I think, sniff out and kind of corner the boar or something like that. And, you know, you're, you're the one that kills it, but it's the kind of, they're the ones that help out kind of like, oh, okay. uh, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, how does people react to Aki and Kanto in, in general <laughs> again? When you are like walking them out in Lisbon or other cities? Yeah. The... I think for um, for me, what, what was difficult with Aki when she was a puppy is that you couldn't go anywhere um, and not being stopped by people because mm-hmm. puppies are so cute that everyone wanted to talk to you no matter if it was like 6 a.m or like noon um and like a superstar superstar. (laughs) yeah and i never imagined i would have back then because she she was born in in 2014 Mm -hmm. i would have never imagined i would have had an instagram account for her but her being a puppy on the streets of san francisco back then people were actually asking what her Instagram account was. Really? They wanted to know what her... Just like, of course, was. of course you have an Instagram for your dog. <laughs> you know, what's, what's yeah, dog's uh, yeah. B- back in 2014, it wasn't yeah. not like the norm and they were asking for the IG profile or something. Cool. But yeah. yet people were doing yeah. it. In so San Francisco, how, it's, yeah, in yeah. San Francisco, it was already, already normal. But um, here, so Lisbon Live, People are very surprised to see uh, these breeds. Yeah, you, know? you probably know more than us. I don't. We don't. I mean, we don't see that many other Shibas. It's pretty. You know, and, and when we yeah. do, we're like, "Oh my God, a Shiba!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like one month ago, a bit more than one month ago, we had this meeting when we met your friend, our mm-hmm. friend in common, uh, French yeah. guy, um, and. Um, we were almost 15 Shibas. I wow. live in yeah, we would have... region, southwest, but uh, there were people yeah. from Algarve over there. Wow. And uh, they did a meeting also in, o- in Oporto, but uh, I can't remember how many, but more than 10. So yeah. a total maybe 40 or something spread around Portugal. It's not yeah. like many, many, but uh, such a small country as ours. 
is a, is a good number, but the popularity is increasing uh, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. Okay, Where a lot of people still see, see them on the street and and recognize you know the kids. The kids here are like, oh, Doge. Yeah, um, <laughs> the funniest thing with Kento was actually in the first because there are very few Shikokus in our. I, I remember our vet uh, when they were entering the microchip information was saying something like, "Oh, I had to add the breed to the system because the breed didn't exist in the Portuguese system or something like that." Yeah. Um, and I think the funniest thing was in the first week or two, there were two people who stopped me on the street and said, "Like, oh, is it a Shikoku?" And I was like, "How did you know?" <laughs> Oh, yeah. cool. Quite quite nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like refined taste. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and they say doge and oh it's the dog from the internet or mm -hmm. uh yeah, uh, small kids. Somebody in they, they somebody in Brussels somebody in Brussels yeah. seriously stopped us on the street, like stopped us on the street and seriously asked whether Aki was a fox. Like, excuse me, is that a fox? Really? <laughs> and you were like in your end like mm, perhaps it might be yeah. like <laughs> there was somebody else who was passing by and was just like rolling their eyes <laughs> yeah right, okay um in this meeting in parque da bella vista uh there, there was this dog that uh, this shiba you know uh, i think uh, she's a female and she she said in uh, strong uh, capital letters like not a fox <laughs> it's not her name or his name but it's saying not a fox all the time so he's like walking around and not a fox <laughs> because maybe people were asking so much so much so much yeah. that the owners got fed up answer your question you for you listening yeah. to the chat <laughs> show your podcast for all things Shiba Inu, celebrating the Doge community around the planet. Feel free to share this podcast with your friends and follow Satoshi, Charlie Mancini Shiba, at Instagram.com slash Satoshi the Shiba. The show will continue right now. Shiba chat, Shiba chat, Shiba chat, Shiba chat. Okay, uh, was there any method you used to to pick uh, those dogs, uh, like uh, the breeders, like when you were investigating about uh, the breed, or was it like, okay, let's let's have it, and <laughs> you just dived, you know? I don't know. I think Lola did most of the research uh, for Kanto. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, communication. Okay. So online. Uh, contacting breeders and I think because it's a breed that is not well known um, people who are very willing to to share their feedback cool. about the breed and and re respect to us to yeah to uh, of the breed but also sharing the different aspects of, of the dogs so definitely talking to breeders uh, got us to learn a lot. And then Ian isn't on Facebook, but there are multiple fa um, Facebook groups where people share their own experience uh, around the world. And I think that's how we could get the most accurate uh, feedback of um, owners. Um, Faki was also talking to breeders, but also online or yeah. talking with people that I, I would have met on the street. Um, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think it's the, the best way. You have like books uh, published in Japan, but sometimes they, the, they are not translated to English or other language. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to find stuff uh, about, uh, about these breeds. Uh, but nowadays you have the, the, the groups, you have Facebook mm -hmm. groups or other social media groups. And it's good because you get to get in touch with, uh, with the owners. And uh, I think it's the best way to learn about it. Because sometimes on the internet, if you do like a very uh, broad uh, search, you get like these stereotypes about uh, yeah. right, right, this yeah. kind of Japanese breeds. They are these, they are that. We don't advise for people to have this breed as the first, as a first owner, you know. But mm -hmm. 
I think it depends, of course, on the on the experience of everyone and the lifestyle, of course, because these dogs are a bit challenging. But in your opinion, what was like the the the, the biggest challenge, or do you think it's since you're a couple, you can uh, you you support <laughs> yourselves uh, like to to. Uh, what, what do you want from your dogs? Like only to be like your companion dogs or to go to dog shows or to... Uh, what was the main purpose like on having a, a dog in your house? Not for shows, but just to... For, for yeah, to be a companion, basically. Okay. Um, and we like... Two companions. Yeah, to be... Yeah. And we like, we like going you know going out and going hiking and stuff and so the you know for hiking they, they both really love um Door, sure. being outdoors and stuff so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah it's really nice to share that with them and being in portugal it's really like a great country for them the access to nature and to yes. amazing hikes that you can mm -hmm. go yeah. on here have you been in Jerez or Rabida? those mm -hmm. kind of mountains and yeah. yeah. So, so uh, do you have any advice for the listeners who want to learn more about about these dog breeds, and uh, perhaps they would like to try the Shiba life and Shikoku life? <laughs> <laughs> I would Could say cat, they cats are tricky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say they sh they should at least meet uh, dogs in person before. Mm -hmm. To be able to observe with their own eyes, um, yeah, the the dogs and how they react with people, how they react uh, with other dogs, because Aki is not always yeah. the most the reactive dog for, in the mood for <laughs> socialize, right? Some somebody told us that um, that Aki had kind of a limited canine language. <laughs> She's, she she really? doesn't really know how to communicate with other dogs. <laughs> She's got that cat software. She just she's a cat. <laughs> I think I don't trust that theory. They they know it all and they are on a higher level. But yeah, yeah, yeah. they just uh, don't want to waste too much energy on it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was reminding in that um, before Kanto. Yeah. So before we we had uh, him up as a puppy. We really enjoy going to, but we still, but we enjoy going to parks and dogs parks here in Lisbon. Um, and the excuses for us to go was we have a dog, she should go to a dog park, right? Um, but the reality is that it was her bringing us to a dog park because she would just sit on a bench, look at the other dogs from high up, and not even interact with anyone so we were the ones that try interacting with other dogs basically yeah, yeah. she would play maybe like you know once a month she's like okay yeah i'll go i'll go chase another dog around but yeah so um, you were going to the dog park to interact with the uh, with the dogs and for she herself not for her you. yeah she will pet you yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome okay like Twisted mind. <laughs> okay, yeah, any yeah. movies or books or websites or uh, social media profiles that you could uh, recommend to the listeners of the Shiba Chat Show? Ooh. Um, there is an act where well, you know you might know better than, than us for Portugal, but I, we've been in this um, Facebook group for Shibas in. Uh, Spain and Portugal, which is quite uh, active. Shikoku mm -hmm. um, uh, of the World on Facebook. Shikoku of the World. Cool. The group on Facebook. Of the world on Facebook. So it's a group, and uh, people are quite active. Yep. Mm -hmm. And also, I think they have a map of the. Or was it a different one? Somebody also started a map of uh, mapping where Shibas mm -hmm. and Shikokus were. Yeah, in, cool. in, in the world. And the, and how many are in that database already? How many Shikokus? Well, there were a lot. There it was kind of like what we found. Like there were a lot in Belgium, Netherlands, France, and then very few in Spain, and I think 
well, at least on the map, Kanto is the only one in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Who knows? There might be another one now. Yeah, maybe um, we, we, we also have a. The people will get excited and they will um, yeah. research more about the brief. And even yeah. people that already have uh, Japanese briefs like Akito or Shiba, for sure. Yeah, we also have a a like a, just a, a private group chat with the other um, owners of the same litter as Kanto, um, so it's kind of fun to share photos and stuff to see like how the how the siblings of are. Of course, uh, Satoshi's litter is all, all like his brother and his daughter is um, how do you call it? His brother and uh, sister. His sister. Uh, they all live here in Portugal. So the, oh, the nice. was born in Toledo, uh, the uh -huh. really Spanish one, and uh, they all live in Portugal. So <laughs> wow. it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. So we, we get in touch with uh, everyone. We don't live on the same, you know. Uh, we are here in Sines, the other is in Gafanha da Nazaré, near Aveiro, and the girl is in Lisbon. <laughs> the girl. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's, it's nice. For them not to be, you know, in different countries or such. What mm -hmm. about uh, Canto? Uh, Canto is all by himself in here with you, of course, in Portugal, but uh, with it? brothers and sisters. Italy, Paris, Paris, okay. Netherlands, oh, so and one and one is still to, in Lithuania. To, to do a gathering, to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Lola and Ian, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Shiba Chat Show. And now it's time for you to go play with a Shiba Inu. If you would like to get in touch, please send us an email to shibachatshow at gmail.com. Bye for now. Shiba Chen, Shiba Chen, Shiba Chen, Shiba Chen, Shiba Chen, Shiba Chen.